If you think diesel power is dying in 2025, think again, because the Cummins N14 just won't quit. This engine has earned a place in trucking history, but what's surprising is that it's not done yet. In fact, it might just be gearing up for a second life. So what's fueling the N14's staying power in a world of electric trucks, tight emissions laws, and rising fuel prices? Stick around, because the answer is more than just horsepower. Now, let's take a second. When was the last time a 30-year-old engine was still in high demand across fleets and rebuild shops? You probably have a better chance of finding a rotary phone in a trucker's cab than finding a modern engine that can outlast the N14. And yet, here we are. The Cummins N14, originally rolled out in the 90s, wasn't just built. It was engineered to endure. We're talking 855 cubic inches of cast iron stubbornness. Rated anywhere from 310 to 525 horsepower, depending on the spec, it could pull your house off its foundation and ask for dessert. But let's be real. Power isn't what keeps this engine in service. It's the reliability, the ease of maintenance, and the fact that truckers still trust it more than most politicians. Now, here's where things get interesting in 2025. Despite tightening emissions regulations and the electrification wave, there's a surprising spike in demand for rebuilt N14S. Why? Because fleets are realizing that not every route can be served by electric rigs yet. Remote hauls, heavy loads, inconsistent charging infrastructure. Sound familiar? That's where the old school muscle of the N14 keeps making sense. In fact, it's created a sort of underground economy for rebuilds and Riemann units. But here's a question for you. How does a pre-2002 engine dodge modern emissions laws? Simple. It doesn't, unless you're running under certain exemptions or using it in off-road, agricultural, or repurposed vocational setups. And some savvy operators are doing just that. The gray zone? It's growing. And that's something regulators aren't thrilled about, but owners sure are. Now hold up. Before you go thinking it's all sunshine and soot, let's talk parts. In 2025, sourcing N14 components isn't as easy as it used to be. Original Cummins parts are drying up, and aftermarket quality can be a bit of a gamble. So, smart operators are stocking up now, like it's Y2K for diesel. If you've ever seen someone hoard toilet paper in a pandemic, imagine that energy. But with camshafts and injectors. And there's another curveball coming. Cost. Prices for well-maintained N14 blocks and full rebuilds are climbing. Some units that sold for five grand a few years ago are now fetching double. Why? Because people are betting on this engine like it's the diesel version of gold. And in a world where new trucks can cost upwards of $200,000, a rebuilt N14 rig with mechanical fuel injection suddenly doesn't look so old-fashioned. It looks genius. So, where does all this leave us? With an engine from the 90s that's not only surviving, but thriving in 2025. It's being resurrected in shops, swapped into gliders, and kept alive by a community that values simplicity and raw mechanical strength. If that's not legendary, I don't know what is. And if you're wondering whether it makes sense to invest in one today, here's the kicker. We're not done yet. In our next video, we're diving into the real-world numbers fuel costs, maintenance intervals, and ROI for N14 builds versus new emissions compliant engines. Spoiler alert, the results might just make you question everything you thought you knew about modern trucking. So don't click away just yet. Hit that subscribe button if you want to find out why some operators are ditching DEF, deleting sensors, and doubling down on diesel legends like the N14. Because when it comes to power, profit, and performance, the old dog still has a few tricks up its sleeve.